Over the last couple videos, we have really packed up our ship and set sail by jumping into this pitch design process. We loaded up this ship with the fundamentals of data-driven baseball and technology used as well as the tools you need to succeed. But there is one very important aspect of pitch design that I haven't yet covered on this channel, and that was by design. This is a very complex idea if you don't already have a clear understanding of the basics. So before we can reach our destination on the other side of the sea, we need to take a little dive into gyroscopic spin. Let's jump into it. First and foremost, we need to cover what gyroscopic spin is. It's commonly referred to as gyrospin. In the past, we've talked about spin axis, or spin direction as the main way to describe how a ball is spinning, and all of that is still good stuff and it's very important to understand. You can see that a pitch with pure backspin here, as we talk about viewing from the pitcher's perspective, equates to about a 12 o'clock tilt if we look at it on time on the clock, like we have been. But really, we are looking at this ball as if it is always spinning perpendicular to the direction it is moving, or in a two-dimensional plane, and that just isn't very realistic. So what happens if we begin to look at it in a three-dimensional way? If you're looking at that same pitch from the top down, you can see that a 12 o'clock tilt can actually function in a number of ways. What happens if the right side of the ball is further forward than the left side of the ball? Or if the ball is spinning parallel to the direction it is moving in? Well, that is the concept of gyrospin. If you're having difficulty picturing this, imagine the way a football spins in a perfect spiral, or the way a bullet is spinning after it's been shot out of a gun. When looking from behind the ball, pure gyrospin would really look like a cement mixer or a washing machine spinning around in a circle. So now that we understand the basics of what gyrospin is, how is it measured? The easiest way to measure gyrospin is going to be by utilizing a rhapsoda. It spits out a couple of useful metrics in order to describe pitches that have gyrospin. These metrics are total spin, useful spin, spin efficiency, and gyro degree. We've talked about total spin on the channel before, but this is taking another step forward from that idea. If we're looking at a pitch with 2000 RPMs, but the ball is spinning with pure gyrospin, None of that spin is going to aid in the movement of that pitch. So this pitch would read with a useful spin of zero. This doesn't necessarily mean that the pitch is bad. Higher or lower spin doesn't equate to a good or bad pitch. It's just another characteristic of a pitch that you need to take into account when designing a pitcher's arsenal. Then, Rapsodo spits out a spin efficiency metric that is much easier to understand and interpret. But basically all that goes into this equation is going to be your useful spin divided by the total spin. In this case, our spin efficiency would be zero. So how does this look on our horizontal and vertical movement charts we've seen so many times on this channel before? Well, because the chart displays the effect a pitcher is putting onto a ball, and this ball has perfect gyro spin that doesn't affect movement in any way, it would fall at that zero zero mark meaning that the pitch is purely going to be pulled down by gravity and nothing else. So like I said, is that bad? This pitch isn't moving at all. No, in fact, some of the best sliders I've seen are closer to that 0% spin efficiency rate. What matters is going to be the separation it has from the other pitches in a pitcher's arsenal. If there's a large separation between a pitcher's fastball here, you can see that although that pitch doesn't move a ton, it is still going to be much different than their fastball. Now let's take a look at that gyro degree metric. This is a new idea added by Rapsodo when they transferred over to the 2.0, and it is one that has also brought with it a ton of confusion to users everywhere. When looking at gyro degree, it's easiest to picture it from the top down like we were looking at earlier. Your perfectly perpendicular spin axis is going to give you a reading of a zero gyro degree for a lefty or a righty. Then perfect gyro spin would have a gyro degree of 90 degree. This is your perfect gyro spin slider. A cutter that's going to fall in between where that fastball and slider would read would read at 45 degrees for a righty and negative 45 degrees for a lefty. And you can picture the way that it goes from for a righty, zero to 90, and for a lefty, zero to negative 89 and then transfers over to 90 at perfect gyro spin. It's as simple as that. So now that you understand that, your gyro degree and useful spin are related. As your gyro degree goes up, your useful spin goes down. 
you can picture that a 45 gyro degree pitch is going to have about a 50% spin efficiency. Lastly, let's briefly cover what ideal gyro spin is going to be on each pitch. We will break this down more in depth in a pitch by pitch video later, but to give you a general guide of what you're going to want on your pitches, your fastball, changeup, and curveball are for the most part going to have higher spin efficiencies. This is because you want to maximize the usage of the amount of spin you are putting on the ball. If you have a pitch with 2500 RPMs, but you have a spin efficiency of 75%, that's really going to equate to about a 1900 spin rate. That has a direct correlation on the amount of movement that pitch is going to have. And then there's the slider, the king of gyro spin. I've seen great sliders anywhere from 0 to 35% spin efficiency, but this pitch is a little more difficult to nail down to a general range. So, I'll cover that in a later video. This is just one of the many complex aspects of the pitch design process, but I hope that this video was able to break it down for you in an easy to understand way. If you learned anything, or you just want to support the channel, please leave a like. If you have any questions or suggestions for a future video, leave a comment down below. Then subscribe for more weekly baseball animations posted now every Wednesday.